Hello, hello everybody. Really quick before we start today's video, I want to give a shout out to a YouTube channel by the name of Whisper Tactical. After the last 500 Magnum video that we made, he answered the call and sent a ton of really cool ammo that we're going to play with today. And without him, this video wouldn't even be possible. So go check him out. He's a good dude. He got a good channel. Whisper Tactical on YouTube. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it, man. All right, everyone. Today we're back with my newest hand cannon, the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. And like I said, Whisper Tactical has just sent a bunch of really cool ammo for us to play with. So this video is basically just going to be the ultimate 500 Magnum ammo showdown. And we're going to compare each of these rounds and see if we can come up with a winner at the end of the video. And let me tell you, there is some awesome ammo that we're going to shoot today. So what I want to do is probably just start on the steel, shoot one round of each, get a feel for the recoil, muzzle blast, sound, all that stuff, and then pick a few of our favorites and shoot those into ballistic shell and see if hopefully we can trap a few of these bullets. It's not easy with the 500 Magnum because it is such an absurd caliber, but We'll see what we can do. All right, we're going to start with this crazy looking hollow point. This is actually a 425 grain low recoil 500 Magnum. And apparently this thing feels like a nine millimeter. So let's start with this one and work our way up. Not bad at all. <laughs> For a 500 Magnum, that's extremely soft shooting. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start hurting ourselves. All right, next up, we have the 300 grain Hornady FTX. I've shot the 44 Magnum version of this and it kicks like a mule. So although it's only 300 grains, this is probably a pretty hot round. Golly, that was an understatement. <laughs> This is going to be a long video. <laughs> All right, next up, we have the 390 grain spire point or spear point. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, uh, but you can see the tip of that bullet is as sharp as a nail. And he emphasized that this one was a wicked little round. So let's see what it feels like. <laughs> That's painful, man. Whew. That one definitely dinged the steel quite a bit harder. All right, next up, we have the 425 grain vaporizer. I believe he said this was his favorite round. So see what this one feels like. Woo! That was by far the loudest and most concussive one that I've ever shot. Holy crap. That was an experience. <laughs> Not too painful on the hand though. This is the 500 grain Hornady XTP, just a lead flat nose bullet. I've also shot this in the 44 Magnum and it's no slouch, so I'm sure this will be much worse. Let's see. I feel like I'm committing a crime out here with how loud this thing is. I just don't feel like it's possible for something this size to make that big of a sound. Insane. All right, moving on up. This is a 635 grain Grand Canyon hollow point. These numbers are getting higher and higher. My hands hurting more and more. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Golly. And that's not even the strongest one we got. <laughs> All right, guys, here it is, the 700 grain T-Rex. This is the one you all have been telling me to shoot. Uh, from what I hear, it's just absolutely brutal on the recoil. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous and not looking forward to this, but let's do it. Golly. <laughs> Ow. That is stupid. <laughs> what in the world would anyone want that for? That is unnecessary. <laughs> what the hell? All right, so after shooting all of those rounds, I'm a different man now. I definitely think the T-Rex kicked the hardest. The 635 grain was actually closer than I thought it would be. That was pretty close 
to the T-Rex, but obviously the 700 grain T-Rex took the cake in terms of recoil. Believe it or not, the vaporizer was louder than any of them. That blast and the concussion that rippled throughout the woods out here was much louder on the vaporizer than it was even on the 700 grain T-Rex. So that kind of surprised me. But in terms of the recoil, obviously no surprise there. I'll be curious to see what the fireballs look like. But next up, we are going to try a ballistic shell test. So I have two ballistic gel blocks on the table here. I have a 10% brand new gel block right there. Not brand new, but pretty new, pretty clear. And then an older one behind it, just in case anything does pass all the way through these blocks. Obviously, I think it will in most of these bullets, if I can even keep them in the blocks. 500 Magnum is such a powerful round. It's hard telling what they're gonna do in this ballistic shell. I wanna thank clearballistics.com as always for providing the ballistic shell we're using in the video. And I think I've dwindled it down to three or four that I wanna shoot in this gel test and hopefully we'll be able to recover some of these bullets. So he actually sent me a couple others that we're not gonna shoot in this video, mainly because I don't have enough room in the ballistic shell for all of them. And I wanna save these for future videos down the road and do something different with them. But next up, we're actually gonna shoot one that I didn't shoot at the steel. This is the 350 grain Underwood Extreme Penetrator. I've actually never seen a 500 Magnum Extreme Penetrator before, and I predict this will probably go through at least one, maybe both of our ballistic shell blocks, and that's why I'm shooting this one first, because it's not gonna crowd up the ballistic shell. So, Underwood Extreme Penetrator, let's see what it does. It's also tough that I'm shooting this gun on one knee. I hope I don't fall backwards. <laughs> Recoil was not too bad on that one, believe it or not. I wish I had someone out here with me to operate my super slow-mo camera because the ballistic shell would probably look awesome. But here's where our extreme penetrator went in to that first ballistic shell block right there. And then over here, you can see actually a much bigger wound cavity than I was expecting. That's one of the biggest wound cavities I've ever seen from a handgun round for sure. And you can see at the end of this first gel block, just how big that thing is. It looks like a rifle caliber or something. That's super impressive. And then into the second gel block, you can see where it actually dipped down, turned left a little bit, and exited about halfway down that second gel block. I'm not sure if that hole in the table is from that bullet or not. I didn't notice it before, but it could have been there. Either way, we lost the extreme penetrator, and as I predicted, penetrated like crazy and did not stay in the ballistic shell. All right, let's go ahead and wake the neighbors back up. This is the 425 grain vaporizer. This is that one that I said sounded like a bomb going off, so. <laughs> Look at the hole that that thing put on the front of our ballistic shell. This is the extreme penetrator and that is the vaporizer. That is one big hollow point cavity and this actually surprised me. So you can see in the first two or three inches back there um, where that bullet really expanded and tore up that ballistic shell pretty good. And then after that, it only went about halfway through our first ballistic shell block and that bullet is as flat as a pancake. So it definitely expanded, did its job really well, uh, but it did not penetrate very far. And that's not what I expected. Obviously a hollow point, you want it to penetrate less and expand like this one did, but I expected it to get at least 12 inches of penetration, but it looks like it dumped the majority of that energy really early in the gel. That would be a good one to shoot watermelons with. All right, let's try the 300 grain Hornady FTX. Believe it or not, this is one of the harder recoiling ones. Although it's lightweight, I think it's probably just going super fast. 44 Magnum version of this. I've never had good luck keeping it in jail because it goes really crazy in there. Let's see if we can trap the 500. Well, we lost our second jail block. <laughs> All right, so that one went in right there on the right-hand side of the ballistics gel block. Still no comparison on the entrance hole to the vapor riser, but you can see in the first like couple inches of gel, that bullet broke apart pretty good. Had bullet fragments go in all different directions, and the bullet itself penetrated all the way through our first gel block into our second gel block and went probably five or six inches. 
uh, before it came to a stop. So I'm actually gonna try to dig that bullet out. And there it is. That is the biggest handgun round that I've ever pulled out of ballistic shell. I don't know if you guys can really get an idea of the size of this thing, but I mean, it is a golf ball, dude. Just absolutely humongous. Um, expanded perfectly, performed really well, and obviously did a ton of damage in the ballistic shell, but that is so cool. I really didn't think that I would be able to recover that. But you can see, performed perfectly. So I think we've got room for one more bullet in that ballistic shell, and I'm sure I'll get crap in the comments for this, but I'm not gonna shoot the T-Rex just because it's not a hollow point, but I will shoot the 635 grain Grand Canyon hollow point, and this one has almost as much recoil as the T-Rex, I promise, so. You still get to see me in pain, but I wanna shoot a hollow point for the last round, so. If I don't survive, it was nice knowing you guys. Golly. Ow. <laughs> well, I don't like this gun as much as I did before this video. <laughs> Whoa, that is not what I expected from that bullet. All right, so our Grand Canyon hollow point went in just to the left of our vaporizer. You can see a very similar entrance hole, still not quite as big. That vaporizer takes the W in terms of the entrance hole, <laughs> which is kind of irrelevant. Um, but if you look over here, you can see that that Grand Canyon hollow point broke apart in five, six, maybe seven different pieces, all really big and broke apart like uniformly, like it almost starburst perfectly, kind of like a G2 RIP or something, and sent those shards in seven different directions all over that ballistic shell. I hope you guys can see that. Gosh dang it, man, the sun is gonna mess us up here. So hopefully you guys can see it a little bit better from this side, but there's huge pieces here, 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 uh, over here, way up here. It just kind of starburst that round into a bunch of different pieces and it looks like our furthest one is probably halfway down the ballistic shell so eight inches probably but that's really cool i don't know if that's what that round's supposed to do but that's definitely what it did in the ballistic shell here and just kind of sent it out in six or seven different directions and they all got an equal amount of penetration which is awesome so obviously the benefit of something like this over a bullet that stays intact and either penetrates too far or expands and stays in the ballistic shell uh, you're getting several different wound cavities instead of just one big wound cavity so for certain circumstances that could be super effective really nasty all right so i went ahead and pulled the vaporizer out of the gel block so i could show you guys this one and that is quite the transformation from what this thing looked like before we shot it obviously it expanded really well and stayed intact but it literally flattened out like a pancake, which is something I've never really seen before. But that is the 425 grain vaporizer. All right, everybody. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up so I can go home and ice my broken hand. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Maybe you enjoyed laughing at my pain once again. Um, I gotta say, this has completely changed my perception on what the 500 Magnum is capable of. Once again, I wanna thank Whisper Tactical for providing the ammo that we used in this video. We do have some more, uh, several others that I didn't even shoot in this video, and we're gonna do other videos down the road with them. But man, what a crazy bunch of ammo, and some of this stuff, I just didn't even know it existed. So that's the benefit of a big bore revolver like that but i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please let me know down in the comments below let me know what was your favorite round that we tested in the video today i think mine is probably that 635 grain grand canyon especially after seeing the ballistic shell results um, it's definitely not as fun to shoot because it is murderous to the hand but the vaporizer is much more pleasant to shoot but is just a concussive beast of a round as well so let me know in the comments which one you guys liked i'd be glad to hear it if you like the video hit that like button for me guys i'd really appreciate it thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time